Hi guys, Sandy here. In this video today, we're gonna to do a match analysis for a high beginner level, um, and we're gonna focus on several areas. We're gonna look at the footwork, the lob choice and when to use it, the bandeja and how to prepare for it, the serve and where you should be going, and also ways of taking the net. So in this example with the footwork, we've taken two longer points, but really it could have been um, any points throughout the match. Um, and, and it's the same really for both pairs. So looking at you know, these points here, it's, it's the kind of ready position, being on your toes, lunging for the balls like that, where you're kind of taking a big step instead of moving into position. Also, when your partner is hitting, being on your toes, ready for that next ball. And you can see that the heels are down. There are kind of lots of last minute desperate steps. And it's the same both at the back of the court and the front of the court. You can see big lunges, you know, while the other player is playing, you know, the heels are down and, and therefore you just can't move as fast. Here you can see that, you know, the player is kind of just standing back, waiting for the ball to come to them. The footwork is so important. Firstly, if you're the one actually hitting that shot, but also after that shot, moving into the correct position. And this is something that World Paddle Tour players look so fast because they are moving immediately after their shot, anticipating the next ball and getting into the right position. Now, if you're the one hitting, it starts with your split step, pivoting with the feet, getting your feet into position so your contact is in the right place. But also, if you're the one not hitting, it's also being on your toes, being alert and being ready because you could receive that next ball. Now we're gonna look at the lob and the choices with the lob. And we're gonna look at a couple of main things. Firstly, you know, the decision of making the lob and then also, you know, when is a good time to do it and also the intention with that shot. So looking now, we, we can see here that there are certain shots that are kind of high balls, but not intended lobs like those last two, for example. Yeah, you want to make sure that if you're going to hit a lob, it's kind of an obvious lob. That was a good example because the opponents are at net and you hit clearly hit a lob rather than trying to hit a ball um, you know, that ends up just being a high ground stroke. Again, there are two examples there that they just go high for the opponent, but it's not an intended lob. And um, you know, the other thing to look at is the opportunity to hit that. Um, you get two different types of lobs, so you get a fast lob and a high lob, but the fast lob is still an intentional lob. Yeah, here we have another example. This would have been a good lob opportunity, some easy balls. And instead of trying to hit past your opponent, the lob is a great option to get yourselves to that net. When you go for the lob, go for nice big targets over your opponent's head. And instead of trying to force your way to net, it can be a good way to approach. So probably the most important area of the bandeja is the preparation for the shot. If you don't prepare in the right position, it's very difficult to hit the ball. And so we're going to look at some of those examples now. So if, we, if we're kind of looking um, at this first point here, as soon as you get into a position where you see it's a lob, that racket has got to be up early. If you can get the racket up early, then that's one less thing to worry about and you're already in a good position to hit that ball, yeah? So try and have that arm up at the back straight away as soon as you recognize it. You also wanna make sure you don't get too close to the net, otherwise it's difficult and you end up trying to force the bandeja uh, falling backwards. Again, if the contact is behind, um, you haven't moved far, far enough back and therefore you can't hit that contact in front. And we see another example there, it means that the ball bounces up high for your opponents at the other end. So as soon as you see that the ball is a lob, you've got to get back early and get behind that ball. If it's too deep like this, hit a bahada, that's a good shot selection, yeah? You don't need to force uh, to hit an overhead. That was a little bit lucky, but again, we're seeing contact behind means that the ball goes up, yeah? So again, another contact behind makes it very difficult. As soon as you can see your opponent's visual cues that the ball is gonna go as a lob, get ready with your racket back, start moving your steps back, and therefore it will be much easier for you to contact in front. And that was a slightly better example. When it comes to shot direction, you usually want to go cross court or down the middle if you can with your bandeja as well. The bandeja is a really difficult shot to master and, and it can really help to watch your opponents and see what type of ball they're gonna to hit to you so that you know whether to prepare. For example, if your opponents are gonna hit a ball against the back glass, it usually means it's gonna be a lob. So you can take one step back and you can be prepared getting that racket up early because 
If you're too far forward or you can't get the racket up early and you're late on your preparation, it usually means that you end up contacting behind your head, which means that the ball then goes up over to the opponents and it makes it easy for them to hit. So you want to make sure that you have far steps back, you can contact in front, and that way you can just be more accurate with your bandeja. Now we're going to have a little look at the serve and, and to begin with just you know go over a serve rules because there's a few uh, kind of fault or illegal serves um, in the game which we'll just show uh, one example here and then we'll go into court position for the serve. So this first example um, is really just to remember that you've got to bounce the ball in your quadrant um, you know on the court yeah so just make sure that happened a few times the other thing to look at is this court position and making sure that you get far enough forward so that you can actually hit a good volley in a good position your aim is to get to that second net post and have a, a good volley if you're too far back it means you've got a difficult volley and often leaves a big gap for your opponents to hit into if you end up kind of hitting it around your feet or you've got to chase it back to the back glass, you're obviously at a disadvantage. Yep, so make sure you serve and get quickly into the right net position. The serve is one of those opportunities that you can start every point with an advantage. If you take your time, keep your serve simple and are accurate and consistent with your serve, then usually it means that it's easier to, for you to win your service game. Yeah, so just one of those things, slow down, take your time and get accurate with your serve and then making sure also that you serve and move into the correct position. I'm gonna put a link up here for uh, one of the serve videos that can help you with the technique to keep it simple. And we've also got some videos which I'll mention down in the description for where you should be moving after your serve. Now we're gonna take a little look at how you should be taking the net or, or ways of coming forward. And I've got loads of examples of this because it was happening throughout the match. So we're just gonna kind of play through them and I'll do the commentary alongside. So the first thing to think about taking the net is the easiest way to do that is a lob over your opponents. Yeah, if the player runs back and hits an overhead and then they don't recover the net, then a good way to do that is just to play down to their feet and come forward as a pair. But if they hit their smash and come forward, then you want to make sure that you don't necessarily need to rush that net, yeah? So if you're in a position that you hit a good lob and the player comes back and hit a smash and they don't recover the net, then both of you can come forward. And you see an example there of the player doing it. It's partly to do with the bandekas like we just spoke about. But again, if you get that chance and the player is falling back, here's another easy example of coming forward as a pair and it's a good way to take the net. If the player is hitting an overhead like that, then it's a good time for both of you to kind of press forward. Again, you don't really want to kind of rush forward, but if the opponent hits an aggressive smash, it bounces off that back glass and it, and it goes already towards the net, then that is a good opportunity, again, for you to come forward and take the net. And here we're seeing kind of several examples of hitting an overhead, not recovering your net position, and therefore you're losing it because the opponent is coming forward. If you're the one who's at the back of the court and your partner is forward and there's an opportunity, then you want to make sure that you come up to go align with them, yeah? Looking at, again, examples here of kind of rushing forward and trying to force your way to net. Better to take your time, get comfortable at the back of the court, lob when you get the right opportunity, and then come forward in your own time. Again, another opportunity, another opportunity to come forward there because the bandeja was hit and he stayed back but both players should come forward. Not necessarily initially, maybe only one to begin with, but then quickly followed up by the second one once you establish that you've got that net position. That was a good example of players coming forward. And here we've got an example of a bandeja and staying back, and then both players should really come forward to take the net. So you can see that there's several areas here that, that have kind of interlinked. We had the footwork at the beginning of the video, then the kind of preparation for the bandeja. And then when it comes to taking the net, it, it's kind of combining all of that. You know, for example, if the lob goes up and you aren't moving your feet fast enough and you aren't getting back to prepare early enough for the bandeja, then you end up contacting behind. You then find it very difficult to recover the net and therefore it's easier for your opponents to come forward. Now we're thinking of this on both sides. If you're the one hitting the overhead, you've got to make sure you get behind the ball, contact in front and then press back and come back up to net. But also from the other side of the net, if you're playing against someone who you hit quite a good lob and they're falling back and they're hitting their overhead, you know it's difficult for them to come back to net. 
So that's a good opportunity to play the ball back to the person at the back and then come forward with your partner. You know, th those are the kind of best ways to, to firstly, to deal with that lob is to make sure you get back and prepare early enough. But also if you're playing against that, this is the best way to take the net is with, you know, comfortable at the back, take your time, choose the right ball, hit a lob and then come forward. And if it goes over their head, you've got even more time. And if they hit a smash kind of falling backwards, then maybe you wait for that to bounce hit that next ball and then come forward. So you can see that you know a lot of this is linked and I hope you find that this is useful for, for your game. On this side, I'm gonna put another match analysis that is kind of similar level to this so you could also get some ideas from that and, and hopefully you know this will help you improve your game.